Good morning everybody, this is Star here and bring you another gaming news video and happy April 2nd. We're now finally in the month of April and I hope everybody had a good weekend. We got a couple of news to go over, so without further ado, let's get on with the news. Our first set of news we have is Assassin's Creed Mirage is delayed to 20, 2024 by a couple of data miner claims. But of course, you probably think if data miners are claiming this, this has got to be a rumor or not a true statement. And that would be the normal case of this situation. But fortunately, a couple of days later, after Assassin's Creed Mirage was claimed to be delayed to 2024, Ubisoft has announced that they're pulling out of E3 2020. Uh, 23 and this way Ubisoft had to say we made the subsequent decision to move in a different direction and we'll be holding a Ubisoft forward live event on June 12th in Los Angeles so with that in mind it could be possible that the rumor about Assassin's Creed Mirage being delayed to 2024 could be just a rumor and false we just have to wait and see but the fact that uh, Ubisoft is pulling out E3 2023 it doesn't look good for E3 in general or it could be proof for the claim that they might announce Assassin's Creed Mirage is being pushed to 2024 uh, that just up in the air because at, uh, in the past Ubisoft right now Ubisoft is not having a good track record when it comes to their game releases there they have canceled a lot of projects and some projects are still in development for a couple of years now uh, the biggest one from the top of my head is beyond good and evil 2 which was teased a couple of, like a couple of years back now and that game still have not release yet so we'll see what Ubisoft have planned for their uh, event this year especially now but it looks like a, a lot of publishers are going with the route going with the route of doing their own type of event you got Nintendo Treehouse uh, play PlayStation Showcase or State of Play Xbox uh, Xbox Showcase and uh, developer director id at xbox like yeah so kind of sorry to see uh this is happening to e3 and that actually ties into the next news that e3 2023 had been canceled along with some other publishers are not going to be attending to e3 and this report comes in that Sega and Tencent are skimming E3 2023, which results in E3 officially being canceled by, uh, by in-person media and digital, which is a very sad case because a lot of people had like good, good times during E3. Me personally, I always wanted to go to E3, E3 at least once in my life, but of course. I could never, I could never have time to like save up the money for it, and so I just always end up just watching it live on YouTube and stuff. And so far, my favorite E3 of the mall was honestly at the, I believe it was like E3 2016 when uh, Spider-Man PS4 got announced, showed gameplay of God of War 2018. Like, I think that was probably one of my most hyped E3s I ever saw. <laughs> oh, bless me. And the one, um, probably one close to that is when, which one was it? Oh, uh, was it at a PlayStation Showcase when Final Fantasy 15 got announced and Kino 3? I one of those two, but overall, uh, E3 2016 was my favorite of them all. And really sad to see this. And actually, the people who runs the E3 organization actually made a statement on the matter. And it reads, following IGN report, the ESA issued the following public statement from Kyle uh, Martison Kish, Global Vice 
global VP of gaming, Repop. Uh, this was a difficult decision because all the effort we and our partners put towards making this event happen, but we had to do what's right for the industry and what's right for E3. We appreciate and understand that interested companies will have playable demos ready and their resourcing challenges may be in E3 this summer, an obstacle that could overcome. For those who did commit to E3 2023, we're sorry we can't put on the showcase you deserve that you come to expect from Red Pop event experiences. The press release as the Red Pop and and the ESA will continue to work together on future E3 events. Yeah, um, me personally, I can understand like for them, this is frustrating that they can't like publishers are canceling. Uh, to go into E3 and stuff, and because it, 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 me personally, I think it just come down to money, in my opinion, because like, like publishers, them, I believe they have to pay to have like booths and all that for E3, and and I just see it as since they're not going to E3 and they will do like an event at their own time. They don't need to rush to get something out there. Especially they said like uh, their partners not having demos ready uh, for the showcase and stuff. Which I can see it's pretty much understandable. Like especially nowadays game developments are taking way longer than they used to during the PS3 and PS4 era because technology advancing so developers are who have plans for their games could fully go into more detail with the games that they're trying to make like for example the big example i could probably say it was for probably horizon forbidden west because they said because they said in Horizon Zero Dawn, they did have an idea to have you ride flying machines, but due to the PS4 limitations, they had to scrap it. And I vaguely remember it was supposed to be, it was supposed to have some type of co-op maybe, but I think the biggest thing is that uh, the flying machine couldn't have been added. But they added in Horizon Forbidden West, but that also came out on the PS4, so maybe they managed to bring in fine to the PS4 version when it comes to, comes to Forbidden West at a lower scale. Because when it comes to the PS4 and PS5 version of games, it's clearly night and day difference. And more evidence of this that for uh, Horizon Forbidden West DLC, The Burning Shore, is going to be exclusive only on the PS5 version, which also ties into the next one because uh, they showed off some new screenshots for Horizon Forbidden West The Burning Shores. And uh, the Guerrilla Games have said that now they're only doing a PS5 version of the DLC. Uh, they now have extra power to make the game really stand out, like electrical storms and the clouds that you could fly in. And they introduce a new machine. I believe it was called the Water Wing. It basically the machine looks like a pelican that you can mount and you be able to go underwater and fly with it. So I'm wondering you could go underwater, they could have it, you could probably have underwater combat. Um to be honest, I'm not one hundred percent sure of that, but the fact that we now could use a machine to go underwater instead of swimming because when it comes to swimming and you're dealing with machines you you are very slow in that aspect. So it's good to have a machine so you can make some quick getaways while you're on the water. Okay. Our next news is do, 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 let's see which one should we cover next? Uh let's cover this one. 
uh, former studio director and founder of Playground Games, Gavin Rayburn, has announced that the formation of a new AAA studio, Lighthouse Games. The team is comprised of veterans from Playground, Rare, Rockstay, and more working on an original IP. So, of course, some people say this is more people who left Playground Games. If you don't know who Playground Games are, they are uh, they are the ones who works who was part of Xbox First Party Studio, and they made the f uh, they made one of the fours again. I think it was either Fours or Horizon. It was it was one. I can't remember which one because they. Um, because Microsoft have two studios that do Forza game. One is the the racer simulator, and the one is like the arcade racer. So you got Forza Horizon or Forza Motorsport. I think Playground Games do the Forza Motorsport. I could be wrong about that, but but yeah. Uh, I get. We just have to wait and see what kind of what they got cooking when the time is right. Alright, our next one comes in uh, Multiverses Open Beta will close on June 25th. It being said, updates will be paused and the game will go offline to prepare for a launch in early 2024. Multiverses will be temporarily removed from digital stores beginning April 4th, which is two days from now, so that would be on Wednesday, which is pretty. No. No, matter of fact, it's tomorrow, I've, why am I saying two days? It's April 3rd right now. Which is pretty wild because I honestly didn't know Multiverses was an uh, open beta, honestly. And I didn't really play that much. And it's pretty wild because a lot of people did probably use actual money for this game. So more than likely, they're not going to get a refund. But yeah... Uh, because one of the news I recently heard that the player base dropped 99% when it comes to multiverses, so it is pretty jacked up, honestly. Like, when it comes to games like this, especially they're free to play, like, developers need to know they need to drop that content almost like at a faster pace. You're not one of these big AAA games that you could wait and wait and wait for until like a certain point to drop new content no when you do it on free to play you, you want to get you want to get the player base in your game playing almost immediately and spending long periods of time in it so you can't have it like oh we'll drop updates like what twice a month and i know that's not go like like twice every couple of months no that's not gonna work it needs to be at a steady flow because at some point people are gonna be like all right this is getting boring and uh here is an actual statement uh a more closer statement on the news that multiverse is closing down i couldn't get the statement but here is from their q a uh, the person that asked the Multiverse Open Beta closing, they respond Multiverse Open Beta will be closed on June 25th, 2023. When will Multiverse Open Beta close? Wait, what they... Uh, they said, when will the Multiverse Open Beta close? They said, we will provide the exact time of day on June 25th as we get closer to the date. Um, they asked, why is Multiverse Open Beta closing? They respond, the multiverse beta has been an important learning opportunity and stepping stone to the next phase of the game. There is still a lot of work to do and we have a clear view on where we need to focus, specifically on the content, cadence of new characters, maps, modes to provide more ways to enjoy the game, along with netcode and matchmaking improvements. We will also be reworking the progression system, looking at new ways for players to connect with friends in the game. To do this right right away, we will be closing the Multiverse Open Bay on June 25th. As part of the process, we'll be pausing updates and taking the game offline 
as we prepare for the launch of Multiverses, which will be targeting for early 2024. Uh, uh, will Glemon will still be available purchase? Yeah, it, that basically sums up their Q and A, the most frequently asked questions. It just basically what it sounds like. Yeah, when we did this game, we didn't have enough time to get all the content together that we wanted to do. So we're gonna remove the game and take and take the rest of this year uh, to finish it up. That's basically what it sounds like to me. So. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Sometimes I really hate that about when developers make free-to-play games. Like, they'll pull it out just to try to get that quick buck with the microtransactions and the content comes later. And I, I always hate that with passion, unfortunately. Um, but before we get on, uh, get on to that... Uh, we got some news about Dragon Age Dreadwolf. Dragon Age Dreadwolf updates are it's in post-production, playable from start to finish. Ex Bioware head Mark Dora returned to work on the game. Mass Effect team assisting to it iterate and polish, and EA won't rush to make sure that uh, make sure they get it right for the fans. I have no expectation for the game since I didn't play any of the old Dragon Age games, so I have nothing to compare it with. But if it does, when they eventually do show off how the game looks, and if I do like what I see, I might, I might pick it up. We just have to wait and see on that. For we know, we might, we might get something at. Well, I can't really say at this E3, but you never know. EA might have their own type of showcase to show off. So. And uh, time will tell when we get to that bridge. Alright, to our next set of news is we have a rumor Metal Gear Solid 3 Remake. Metal Gear Solid 3 Remake is releasing in 2024. Re releases of other titles are still planned with a potential, revi uh, potential review around E3, according to VGC Andy Robinson. I'm just gonna say take this rumor with a grain of salt because for all we know this could be entirely false for all we know so time we tell this rumor is true um I it could be possibly true because I think I did heard of Andy Robinson and he has like a pretty okay track record when it comes to stuff like this, but I'm not 100% sure. So, yeah, just take away a grain of salt for now until we get a solid confirmation. Alright, the next set of news is some updates for Gran Turismo 7. Gran Turismo 7 news, new update 1.31. You get five new cars, two new track layouts, four new events. The game will now support 120 hertz with VLR support, improved suspension, physics, tire model improvements, and legendary car price adjustments, and a lot more. And a lot of people have been having fun with Gran Turismo 7 with all the updates that I got it and that it's uh, also playable in the PlayStation VR 2. I believe is is up to the standards of a Gran Turismo game that everybody expected to, uh, excuse, everybody expected to be and it's good to see that it's still getting support. Right. Our next set of news we have is unfortunately uh, a disappointing one. It is Atlas Fallen being delayed to August 10th. And this is what they had to say. Dear players, thank you for the tremendous support we received so far on Atlas Fallen. From your enthusiastic comments on our video teasers online and in person at PAX East. To the positive previews from critics, we're grateful and honored to have you excited to play our game. Our goal has always been to create a memorable action RPG experience in a unique setting. 
with exciting gameplay and the option for fully playable seamless co-op with a friend. We love to give the game some extra time which allow us to deliver the best possible version of Atlas Fallen. To achieve this, we have made the difficult decision to delay the worldwide launch of Atlas Fallen to August 10th, 2023. We will come back in early summer to share our updates on the game, including new gameplay footage and your first look at drop-in co-op gameplay. We can't wait to bring you a fantastic experience in the deserted lands of Atlas this summer. Thank you for your patience and understanding as we head to the finish line. From Doc13 and Focus Entertainment. I'm just gonna say this about it. Like I can understand games need extra time for polish and all that. But I'm I'm very getting really annoyed that they don't they put out release date believing that they will reach that finish line, but then they find out they're not gonna hit that release date in time, so they need to delay it. I rather not got a release date until they were 100 percent sure they would get it done. Like this from this generation we get like a lot of games been delayed yeah and all that could be could qualify into the whole pandemic thing that happened i totally understand it but like if you if you don't like look at all the stuff and you see like hmm, we might not i rather have a developer say like all right we we crunch all the numbers and we probably will make the set release date without having to do a whole bunch of patches. So we need to delay it a little bit more so we can get all that done. And they would have said that and not give it. I just wish they didn't give a release date. Especially we were like, what, less than a month away from the release because the game was supposed to come out in May. But now that we have to wait till August, I'm just at the point like, man, you should you shouldn't just not give a release date. But that just me. Other people may feel different. But me personally, I'm just I'm really getting annoyed at that point. To constantly hear that. Alright. Well, after that, we got uh some news about uh, Bloober Team. If you don't know who Bloober Team, they're the ones who work with Konami to do the Silent Hill, Silent Hill 2 remake. And they put out a statement about the, the certain news that have been going around the studio. They said, as the Bloober Team, you don't comment on rumors. However, this time we need to take to the floor. As some recent statements have been taken out of context due to inaccurate translations, our company messages did not contain sales forecasts of specific titles. The figures connected to Silent Hill 2 refer to the potential success of the type of games we'll be focusing on in the future. It's also not true that we have announced that Silent Hill 2 is ready for release. Regardless of the development state, all of our act uh, activities are focused on obtaining the highest quality for the finished product. The quality that fans of Silent Hill 2 deserve. We are aware that players are waiting for more information about Silent Hill 2. As soon as such information becomes available, we are sure that Konami, the publisher for the game, will share with the fans. Thank you for your support and we continue to do our best to provide high quality games that give players the best emotional experience possible. Boober Team. I feel they made the statement because I believe I reported last week that articles came out saying that Bloober Team has said that the game is ready to be released, but when it comes to putting down a release date that was up to their publisher, which is Konami, so they made this statement saying like that kind of so it taken out of context. So, uh. So with that in mind, they're probably they're probably close to finishing the game, but all that stuff saying that it was up, it was ready to be released and they're just way on Konami. Uh, they said that was false. And but what they're saying is it's up to Konami to share info for for the Silent Hill 2 game, so I guess once once Konami give them the go ahead to put something out there, they will do it. But 
Yeah, I guess I guess it would be up to Konami to say yes, no, or wait till such and such. We'll probably get something around E3 per se, because to my knowledge, I think Silent Hill 2 is only coming to the PS5, so I guess it will come down to if PlayStation do a showcase, I guess. Uh, I'm just assuming. Because that also ties into a rumor from that comes from Jeff Grubb. I have spoken about him before when it comes to his track record uh, uh, reporting news and such. And he has reported that a PlayStation show. Well, he said a PlayStation showcase will be shown around um, before Summer Game Fest. You don't know what Summer Game Fest is. Uh, it's basically like a, like a E three showcase that Jeff Keighley has um, has been doing for a couple of times. He does two type of shows. He does the Summer Game Fest and the Game Awards, and it's kind of funny. He low key, I low key see Jeff Keighley somewhat of a savage because literally as soon as uh, E three announced it was getting canceled. Uh, he put out a tweet that saying Summer Game Fest is coming around June, so it's kind of so it's kind of funny that, that he did that because uh, not only him but other people in the industry have spoken about the whole thing when he came to E3 being canceled. Like Sean Layden, Sean Layden used to be um, not the CEO, but he was the head of I believe it was like first party. For PlayStation, just like what uh, Herman House is doing right now, and he and he agreed with Jeff Keighley say like when it came to E3, it was all E3 was good and so for the first couple of years, but when they were seeing that it was not evolving, they knew like yeah E3 is like. E3 was was not going to be how it used to be because it's not evolving to what um well how to put it it, it was not evolved it's not evolving to the current standards how uh like how people get game and stuff because like right now like um like right now when it comes to like uh like how certain publishers could do their own showcase and while having to fork over the money for them to be at E3, they could put that time to, to their showcase and stuff. And especially like people use social media, they be using social media to get, get gaming information. So technically they don't need E3. The only thing I could see people truly miss when it comes to E3 is just the presentation because you seeing these games trailers or gameplay at E3 is a whole lot is a whole different experience than you just watching on your TV or phone. Like, can you imagine like the people that was there that was seeing the the orchestra does the theme for God of War 2018 and you just seeing there for the first time? Then you get to see when the trailers go inside the room and you see uh, Kratos and Darkness saying like. Uh, when he said she taught you to hunt, yes. Good. Because I am hungry. And that's when you see Kratos step out of the show and he like feed us. Like to be like if I was so if I was there in person I saw I'll be losing my mind. And the fact you and also you get to see the reveal for uh a Spider Man game because to my knowledge I believe the last Spider Man game was Marvel, I mean, no, Amazing Spider-Man 2. I think that was the last Spider-Man game. I could be totally wrong about that. But, and the fact you get to see uh, Yori Longthaw voicing at, as him, and you don't know who Yori Longthaw, he's been in the voice at the industry for a while. Some people may know him as the voice actor for Sasuke and uh, for Naruto. He also did a lot of work, so I, I was geeked when I saw that, so yeah, E3 does have that magic to it, but unfortunately, it looks like that magic is fading away. Unfortunately, all right, <clears throat> all right, sorry for that little rambling. All right, our next set of news comes from uh, Square Enix 
and Luminous Production to announce the, the, the launch of the DLC for Forspoken. Forspoken DLC is called In Tonto We Trust. It's a story DLC that I'm releasing on May 26th. The details of it is a prequel set 25 years before the base game, set new set of magic abilities, a vertically designed environments, battle alongside Tanta Sentra to unlock new combat strategies and coordinate attacks combos. Frey goes to the purge of the Redding, the famous battle that drove the Tantas to madness. So yeah, you get to experience the Basically, you get to experience the beginning part before the main game, and <clears throat> I think that's pretty cool. Give us a little more context, like how we got, how we got here. So, I'll, I'll check out when it comes out. Just this past week, I did finish for Spoken. Uh, it was a, it, it was okay game. It, it was not as bad how some people really portray it as. To me, it was a solid. I give it. I gave it a six point five out of seven. I did have my gripes with the game, but it was not overall bad. How people portray it. it. It was average. I'll just say it was average. Okay. On to our set. Our next set of news. Uh, CD Projekt Red announced uh, the uh, more. More details for the DLC for Cyberpunk 2077, Felt to Liberty will be uh, will be shown in June. Uh, I'm assuming they was gonna do that for E3, but I possibly is gonna show on Microsoft because I believe Mar yeah Microsoft did have the marking for Cyberpunk, so maybe maybe we'll be at Microsoft Showcase. Who knows? I are. Another sentence we have is Final Fantasy 16 has gone gold ahead of the release date, which comes out in uh, two months. So I'm excited for that. That's what that is one of my most anticipated games for this year. Uh, R2 delayed to late 2024. If you don't know that game? It had. Ben Diesel in an art game that was supposed to. I don't know if you recall if this ever had a proper release date. Maybe it had a release date for 2023, but now it's being delayed to 2024, unfortunately. Uh, reports saying. Uh, reports came out saying Gorilla Games' Decima engine is being used by several PlayStation Studios for their games. Uh, could. And somebody that could. That could Decima engine also be used by more third party studios like Kojima Productions for future PlayStation exclusive. I think that's pretty cool, especially um, more PlayStation in house studios are using the Decima engine because after because the Decima engine looks really good when, after when Horizon Zero Dawn came out. Then when um, Kojima came to play such studios, they let him use the Decima engine and he managed to customize it, upgrade to make it better. Uh, look how he did uh, Death Stranding and it just looks even more incredible now that uh, Horizon Forbidden West used the more upgraded version of the Decima engine and uh, Kojima is using the Decima engine again to do Death Stranding 2 which now that it's going to be fully developed on the PS5 which will make it even more stronger than it to make it look even more better than it did and like it has a lot of, the Decima engine is a very cool engine and stuff so the fact that possibly more PlayStation in-house studios are going to be using that engine is going to be it's going to be crazy uh, we have another one is, uh, take this one with a grain of salt, but it said, according to Ryan Carter, one of Naughty Dog's employees, their next project will be a brand new IP. Due to NDA, can't say much about the game, can only point out that it will be a completely new IP set in a unique and immersive world that pushes the boundaries of story and gameplay. Don't know what that could be, but I guess we just have to wait and see what happens with that. 
uh, Square, ne Square Enix have confirmed that Infinity Strash Dragon Quest Adventure Die is launched worldwide this fall for Switch, PS4, PS PS5, and PC. I I'm starting to like the Dragon Quest games, and so so far my favorite Dragon Quest game that came that I play is Dragon Quest 11, and I am looking forward to 12 whenever that uh, wherever that release. But I am gonna check out this game. Uh, I did look at the trailer. Apparently, it's going to be um, is following the the nineteen the early 80s or 90s of the anime evolving with this character so I am looking forward to seeing that and with that being said uh, we had a couple of stuff from the place of blog post how uh, the, the developers of the Final Fantasy 16 taking the, how they use the power for the PS5 and the DualSense controller and I'll I'll just put that in the description for you to read yourself. But with that with that being said, that's the news for this week. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and I catch you guys in the next one. Hope you guys enjoy your weekend, and I'll catch you guys next time.